got a 2010 Toyota Highlander Limited 3.5 liter we've got a problem with the horn will not sound the panic button on the fob will cause the horns to sound but you push on the steering wheel horn will not sound So on the steering wheel, you can push on here all day long and you cannot get the horn to sound. You can try moving the steering wheel in different locations, you know, to see if maybe it's the clock spring has a loose wire, but it's bad enough that it will just never fire. However, if you take and push on the panic button, The horns obviously work. The fact that the panic button works on the fob and the horns obviously work makes it kind of silly to check the fuses, but I wanted to show you that there are fuses in here. There's a couple of them related to horns, so you just kind of lift up this little cover here and expose that. Push back and lift up at the same time. That exposes your engine fuse box. Now on the lid of that fuse box you've got a chart that shows you what each fuse does. It actually comes with a fuse puller, that white thing, and some spare fuses up there. But if you read these real close you'll find two of them that are related to horns. So there's one there, a 10 amper, and there's this S horn down here, seven and a half. So what I did was pulled each of those fuses out, looked at them, they were fine. In this case I was surprised there is no horn relay. You know growing up there was always a horn relay. Apparently that's now been replaced by some kind of a solid state relay. So there is no horn relay. So the assumption is that it's the clock spring in the steering wheel. Anytime you do that, you're going to take the airbag off and you want to take off this negative battery terminal and move it off to the side. You might want to note any of your radio stations and that kind of stuff. Hopefully there's no security system that's going to lock me out when I hook it back up, but uh, I don't think there is. I've run into that on a Honda where you disconnect the battery and then when you put it back together, the dang radio wants a security code and if you didn't grab that in advance, or if somebody didn't note it in the glove box, you're hosed. I've got the engine running so I have the advantage of the power steering, but if you turn this steering wheel, you'll expose a Phillips screw there and there will be one over here on this other side, so you'll eventually have to take those out. Again, before we get really deep into this, we're going to pull the negative battery terminal off, but I wanted to show you those two screws before we got started. Now with the battery disconnected, we'll get started, so we'll get these two screws out, one on this side, one on the other. So I've got the lever down here pulled down. This is all the way up. And grab this bottom piece and pull on it. And it just comes apart. And then work it off over that lever. Wouldn't really have to. Eh, I'm going to take it all the way off. So 
So I had to push the lever all the way up to make this come out real easy. Top piece, let's see what we got. Top piece, we may have to bring it down. Now there are these little panels on the side. You want to just real careful get in here with the screwdriver and see if you can just just catch catch it inside and pry it out, and it'll just pop right out of there. It's kind of hinged over on this back side and just pries right out of the front here. That'll expose a Torx up in here. If we get two of those out we'll be able to take the steering wheel uh, airbag out of the way, disconnect it and get it off to the side. On the passenger side that little panel is a bit different. It's wrapping around this control for the cruise control but again the same technique just get your screwdriver in here pry it out a little bit and it should just pop right out. That'll expose the torques over on that side. Then there's your Torx over here on the passenger side, so let's get those two out and that'll allow us to take this airbag off. Turns out to be a T30 Torx up in there. So we'll get that one out, get the one on the other side out, then this airbag will pull out with a probably I think a couple cables connected to it. We'll get those disconnected, get it off to the side. So get these two Torx out. Those torques are kind of held up in there, the kind of caption held with a little plastic around them, so they just come loose, they don't come out. Here's the one on the passenger side. It's up a little higher. So we've got those two torques loosened, they're still suspended in there, captured. But this piece here will lift out. There's a couple cables connected to it. show you how to get those disconnected. Now with these connectors you want to get something real small little screwdriver maybe an ice pick and you need to pry up on these center yellow squares here. Get them to pry up just a little bit and then after that you can wiggle and pull each of these out. So I'm not sure if you can see it but I got a screwdriver under here and I got this one to pop up. So this one popped up. This one I'm gonna just dig around under here a little bit and it just popped up. So now I can wiggle on these I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, camera down just gonna wiggle on these two and they just should back out of there now with a little wiggling. You could grab them with some needle nose if you wanted to get some extra leverage but I'm going to shut the camera off for now. So the first one wasn't too bad, just kind of grabbed it out the bottom and the top, wiggled, came right out of there. So now this airbag here is disconnected. There is just one more little spade connector here. It's a ground. Just wiggle on that and pull it back. I can't tell if you can see that one or not. Let's see, is that, where's my finger at? Okay, here's my finger. There's this one little spade connector here to ground. Just grab that, wiggle it, pull it back. It's on there pretty good. So I'm going to readjust here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but. Hmm. I'm actually going to go grab my needle nose just so I can get some good leverage on that. It's harder than I would have thought. There is actually a little trick. That little tab's not going to just pull right out of there. There's a little tab up at the top. I'm going to squeeze it in and pull up and it just comes right off of there like butter. So there's a little tab. There's a little tab on this connector you have to 
push in and then it'll just slide right off. So really what we've got left now is you've got a couple of cables up here. I think you're just going to push this white tab on the top down. These two will pull out. This uh, one cable is just going through a little clip down here just to hold it. Nothing, no electrical connection. And then this cruise control piece will come off with the steering wheel. So I have added a couple little red dots to mark the location of the steering wheel. Once we get that nut off of there, we'll add another one. But uh, let's go ahead and get these two connectors popped off here. There's one. Here's the one with two little the red and the black. That's off. And then this one just pull out of that little little clothespin, plastic clothespin that's holding that cable. So now all the cables are loose. These yellow ones stay with the clock spring. So let's go ahead and we'll get this nut off of there, put another mark on there so we can get the steering wheel back in the right spot. And we'll go from there. You got these two top white connectors. One kind of goes to each side, so it's doing the temp, up and down, off auto. Some of the wires go over here to the radio controls. The smaller one uh, is only related to canceling the cruise. So something in these wires here is obviously the, the horn. Now there's only two wires in each of these. Uh, the black one has a red and a black and the orange one has a yellow and a blue. I would have thought there would have been more wires in that but probably one of these two is the horn and one is the uh, one that tells the airbag to blow up in your face. So I guess if you wanted to, you could probably, you know, jumper these things and, you know, put the battery back, put the battery back on, jump one of these things and, uh, you know, see if it fired. But I got the clock spring. I'm not going to send it back. So let's just go ahead and we'll put the clock spring on. Hopefully that fixes the horn. If so, we're done. If not, you know, we'll come back and diagnose where in the heck is the switch at in this thing. Uh, it's kind of weird. I... I don't really see, you know, how this process closes a switch somewhere. I don't see where the contacts are at, but it would be unlikely that that switch would go bad in such a low use switch. So 90%, 90 plus, it's the uh, clock spring. It's a good time just to do a quick sanity check that your new part looks like it's going to work in here. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it must be must be that this cruise control thing uh, plugs into here down here where I can't see it. So yeah, if this if this thing was bad, you could take uh, these Phillips out, get this cruise control thing to come out, and that would then snap into there. So I think we're okay. So we're going to keep going. I'm going to get a half inch drive socket and a ratchet and we'll get that center bolt taken out. It's a 19 millimeter. Get that on there. Came loose. I guess one of the tricks is if you leave this on there a little bit if you can then wiggle this thing if you're pulling hard you won't uh, have it pop all the way off into your face otherwise you're gonna have to get a puller and screw into these holes that are there and attach your puller so let's see if we're gonna get lucky and be able to pull this thing out of there yep so there, that nut kept it from coming out and blowing up in my face. So go ahead and get that nut the rest of the way out. Get 
while I'm here I'm gonna make a another red mark for the alignment of the steering wheel okay so my center mark should go right in the middle of my blob and line up with the one at the bottom that should be adequate pull this off work these yellow wires through there set this over out of the way okay well here's the answer that uh, the one I was kind of debating about this connector down here there is a connection there and some other ones so we got to get get these connectors out as well down in here so we'll go ahead and get those out I can see here is the what used to be the tab eventually we're going to take this and break this tab off and that will allow it to start to turn so there's some good videos out there that show you how to get these uh, connectors out I'm gonna go ahead and do it I don't know how much I will show you it's not clear how well you can see here so this uh, this black one is just a little thing you just push up push up and, and pull out at the same time comes out now this other one they've said is the airbag one and that one seems like you've got to push in over on this side and it will come out maybe at the same time you're doing something over on the other side so this side definitely does push in I've seen a good video where they're showing this where that, this side pushes in oh just pushed right off then so I just pushed in over on this side right down in this area okay now as far as what's holding this clock spring in there's just two little fish hooks you just push this down and that little fish hook will come past and there's one on the other side so just do that push these both down and then this whole clock spring assembly should just pull straight back so there's the fish hook on the new one on the passenger side there's the passenger side there's the driver's side so now this thing should be should be loose. There's one up on top as well. And then we did have one more connector down here. One more connector here. So we'll check, make sure our new one has that, and we'll go on. It was kind of scared me at first, because I'm like, hey, this third connector, I don't have that here. But I went in and watched uh, another video, and thank goodness the guy showed the fact that I think this might be the steering wheel sensor that works with your power steering, since this does not have a power steering pump, but a little electric motor. I'm not sure but anyway this piece has to pop off so you pry it out of the old one there's several little clips around here pry that out and then it will pop into your new one so I don't think you would even need to disconnect this wire I'm going to try and just leave that wire connected and see if I can get away with uh, getting this popped out and popped into my new one. So there's a couple clips on the side and then 
you got a couple clips here on each side of that block that's sticking out. Finally just decided to undo this connector, just push down, wiggle, and pulled out. Now I can work on getting this piece off of here and onto the new one. So it took just a little finagling, but I finally got this piece to come off. There's really no, no wires or anything. There's wires that connect to here, but nothing connects from this to the, the, what's going to be the new one. So then we'll just snap this back onto the new one, and then we'll start the reassembly. So I just took that piece off, dropped it into the new one, just pushed with my thumbs on both sides, got it to click in there. So we should be ready for reassembly now. So I push this down into place, and it will click in to a couple spots. I already plugged in that one connector to that piece that we had to move over before I just clicked it on here. So now we've got this uh, yellow airbag connector. Slips on and clips. The black connector clicked in. So I think that's it for connectors. These go on later after we slip it back through the steering wheel. This is clicked in there good. Eventually we're going to break this off. I'm going to do a sanity check first. Alright, I'm getting close to the point of no return. Once I snap this little thing off, you know, I'm pretty much dead. But it looks like I can put this cover back together now. I might have to lower this down a little bit to get the top piece back on. But I think I can go ahead and snap this piece back together. Get that taken care of. Then we'll break this off and we'll put the steering wheel back on. Yeah, that seemed to work easy enough, putting this back on before you put the steering wheel on. So obviously the reverse is true. You could take the steering wheel off and then take this off at the beginning of the project. That might be a little easier too instead of working this wheel back and forth. But uh, six and one half dozen another pretty much. So what you got here is this little tab is keeping this from turning with respect to this. So there's just a little piece can see that little top piece goes in there but we're just going to go to the point of no return now we're just going to take this and break it off now the rest of this is just the reverse of what we did you know we got to get these little yellow wires fed through the steering wheel Get our alignment set on the steering wheel and get it to slip over those splines. Double check that alignment. Looks perfect to me. Finger start that on there just like a lug nut. I'm sure there's a torque spec to this. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Okay. All right. Now we just uh, plug these little cables back in. Putting the little one on the right end first with the red and the black wire. Then the other one just snaps. Uh, get this wire back in that little holder down there. Now we'll bring in the highly explosive airbag. We'll put that little 
ground clip on first that has the little tab for safety. I'm going to put the tab facing outside. Okay. Then we'll get these connectors up in place. You won't be able to see what's going on here, but basically those little yellow little yellow tabs are still pulled out. Those little yellow tabs are still pulled out. We'll go ahead and uh, they're keyed. Okay, I see the key. Looks good. So push him down in there. It goes in, and then I push down on the yellow lock. So now the black one, get the black one in there, seat it, push the yellow tab, locking tab down, it snaps into place, and now we should be able to think about it for a second nothing else we've got here no no more connectors ground wires hooked in black and orange are connected everything we connected on that clock spring um, we're set to put this back down in here and then we go in and tighten the T30 torques on each side put the little covers back on hook up the negative battery terminal and see if we accomplished anything. Now for the smoke test. Whew. Solve the problem. Clock spring baby. Now, we've got to make sure the radio works, got to make sure all these other controls on the steering wheel work and then we can call this thing a success. So, I'm going to uh, Shut the hood, um, clean up a little bit, take it for a test drive, play around with these, make sure everything works, and then I'll call it a complete success. So it appears I did lose the radio stations, that's cool. Um, basically uses the aux anyway with the, with the cell phone. But uh, all this other stuff works up here, you know, this changes the display. Uh, I can uh, run the volume up and down over here on the steering wheel that kind of stuff um, mode changes from you know FM changes from FM1, AUX, all that kind of stuff that works uh, phone and stuff I don't know if I ever use that temp I don't know I'll have to try that while I'm out moving around I think you have to have the heater on air conditioner or something but anyway everything seems to be working on the steering wheel and we have a horn also the other good thing is I don't have any you know airbag flashing lights no trouble codes nothing like that so everything's looking good I'm a cheap guy so I went with an aftermarket one so far the horn works anyway I'm gonna take it out for a test drive make sure all the other stuff works but hopefully we get some longevity out of this but this thing was a heck of a lot cheaper than a Toyota one